So today we want to we want to focus on fair trade because we believe it's important that you understand the movement that is behind us and why our organization exists. Um, and we want to explain then how fair trade as a social movement for a change in the context of the YFTA program. Um, now, I'm going to, today, I'm going to talk briefly about what is fair trade. Uh, we'll talk about certification and fair trade schemes. We'll talk about current topics. What is fair trade? So I'll talk about the general philosophy of fair trade, why, who are we. I'll talk about the definitions and fair trade, some definitions and fair trade in the law. So I would say the starting point is that of fair trade is that reality um, is that we have a lot of inequality, more some more get that some have a lot, some don't have a lot. So there are a lot of disparities in reality, right? The question is how to deal with it. And there are different approaches. One is the equality approach. And, the, and, and that would result in saying that there is an assumption that, every, that everyone benefits from the same support. So equal treatment would mean that you offer the same benefits or the same rules of the game for everybody and that's great that's one approach the other one is equity which is everyone gets the support that they need which is much more centered around the needs of the person as you can see here in these um, uh, illustration the person who's shorter gets more support than the others and then there is the concept of justice, where actually everybody, regardless of their circumstances, can actually see the game or you know, have a meaningful life without support or accommodations because the cause of the inequity was addressed. And this is about removing the systemic barriers that have been removed. So the federal movement is clearly about equity and clearly about justice. And we seek, we seek equity in trade, but we also seek to remove the root causes of injustice in trade. So that's a general kind of a conceptual clarification. Now, we're not talking about, in, in this image that we saw before, it was all about spectators or spectac spectators of a game. And then who sees it and who sees the game, who doesn't see the game. Okay, that was just to introduce the concept. What is the issue or the problems that the fair trade movement wants to tackle? Well, we want to tackle the, the huge imbalances of power in supply chain. There is a lot of consumers. There is a lot of producers in the world. And we talk about food. We could talk about textiles and artisans, etc. But actually not everybody has the same power and there are some actors in the supply chain that have way more power than others to what extent sometimes in some re in some supply chains is the retailer that has a lot of power in some cases it's the trader in some but certainly farmers are not uh, in a position to actually negotiate prices and they often get very low daily prices. They are imposed in terms of trade. And rather than being autonomous and being able to decide for themselves, they are victims of a system that is unfair and that oppresses them and pushes them to poverty. They don't have sufficient income. And this leads to very um, negative consequences on their health, on human rights. Uh, sometimes they need to ask their children to work. You know, if you're really poor, you need all hands that you can use in a farm. So poverty leads to human rights violations. And these are the kind of things that we want to address. We want to change the system, which we believe is unfair, and we want to empower producers 
to have sustainable livelihoods through trade. So we believe in the role of trade. We're not against trade. We're not against the economy. But we believe that actually trade is only good if it's done under certain conditions. So that's a bit the starting point. Uh, so the fair trade movement is, is, a, is a big, I would say, network of many different types of people and organizations. It's, it's a social movement for change. On the top left, starting top left and going to the right and down, top left, we've got producers. These are often the people that we think uh, the first fair trade producers, the fair trade organizations work with more than 2 million fair trade producers globally offering better terms of trade. Sure. The fair trade movement is also about importers and retailers, organizations that are really committed to actually privileging and, and favoring fair trade supply chains and making that of them available to consumers. The, the fair trade uh, shop uh, are also, uh, you know, Artisan du Monde, for example, uh, Photo from France. These are also the fair trade movement, not the shop itself. It's a building, but actually the people that run it, very often led by local volunteer groups. The one on the middle, on the left, it's about fair trade towns movement. There is a, there are more than two thousand fair trade towns in the world, and these is our very interesting a campaign of citizens and a fair trade movement asking the, the 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 cities and local authorities to actually commit to buying fair, promoting fair trade, and there are more than two thousand of those. We also have fair trade schools and fair trade universities. And these are some examples of some materials in the UK and in Spain that talk about the growing number of schools and universities that join the fair trade uh, movement. And then uh, the fair trade movement is also about activists. And here you see, for example, on the left, on the third row, a picture of some activist uh, last year in the UK complaining when uh, Nestle uh, dropped, uh, stopped using the fair trade label for Kit Kat in the UK and Ireland, which was the case uh, back then, and then they decided to stop doing it. So there was an action to complain against Nestle to say you need to stand with fair trade farmers and continue paying uh, a fair price and a premium to the cooperative. But anyway, Nestle didn't do it. Uh, but anyway, we are a movement that also monitors and challenges companies. And here the last is a picture from a recent uh, International Fair Trade Towns Conference, which is a bit linked to uh, the other picture I shared. And as you can see, these are all people that are interested and active at local level, promoting fair trade, raising awareness on fair trade, and, and promoting that their city takes a step for fair trade. This was taken, if not mistaken, this picture in Wales, if not mistaken, at a recent conference. Wales, by the way, same as Scotland, same as the, the, city, the region of Brussels, they are in a process of being a fair trade region as well, which is very exciting. All this to say that um, the fair trade movement is composed by different kinds of people, private sector, civil society, and all sorts of initiatives that, uh, that, that form our movement. Let's say, if we have a Bible, let's say, it's a joke, of course, we don't have a Bible, but our basic reference is obviously the International Fair Trade Charter. And I can only encourage you to have a look at this, uh, at this uh, text, which is, let's say, the basic document that defines what fair trade is. And these are the logos. There are some of the organizations that recognize this charter. There is a video that you can watch. There is a website. And what does this charter say? Well, it says a lot of things. It talks about the approaches of fair trade to alleviate poverty, to promote sustainable livelihoods. But basically, and it's a bit long, sorry about that, but it talks about the definition of fair trade, right? And, and it says it is a trading partnership based on dialogue, transparency, and respect that seeks greater equity in international trade. Remember equity from before. It contributes to sustainable development by offering better trading conditions to and securing the rights of 
marginalized producers and workers, especially in the South. We will talk later about this, especially in the South. And then it also says, fair trade organizations engage actively with consumers in supporting producers, awareness raising and campaigning for changes in the rules and practice of conventional international trade. So this is a very long, but nevertheless, very complete definition of what fair trade is about. There will be plenty of opportunities after for questions and debate. Now, fair trade is mainly, a, let's say, a civil society initiative. And as you can see, well, this charter is supported by civil society actors, yet there are some states, not all states, but some states that also have public policies on fair trade. So the countries that probably have more regulated approach to fair trade are France and Ecuador, where they have laws on fair trade, they have public policy strategies on fair trade, they have a fair trade definition. Others don't have any policy and others have a light approach. So the European Union, for example, had a hands-off approach. What do we mean by a hands-off approach? It means that it tolerates it, it recognizes it, it, it promotes it, but it doesn't own the concept. It doesn't actually do much to promote it, right? Um, so this is a bit that the situation where we are at this stage. There are some interesting policies. Um, let's say, for example, the EU supported a Fair Trade City Award, which is great. And so in that sense, the EU is supporting the visibility of fair trade. But there is so much more that the EU could do to promote fair trade. So, yeah, these are different approaches to fair trade in the law or fair trade and government. Now, briefly, fair trade schemes and certification. So, fair trade rules and certification schemes are not an objective in itself. The fair trade movement has set up fair trade schemes and certification because they can be useful tools to achieve the objectives of the fair trade movement, but they are not objectives in themselves. And if you want to know more, and, and here you can see the link, there is actually an international guide to fair trade labels that was updated last year, which talks about the main uh, labels uh, of fair trade. And I can only encourage you to look into that. And they are all very interesting. They all have their different accents. And I can only encourage you to have a look at this guide to, to have more details. I don't want to go into all this detail, but I'm happy to answer questions if need be. Now, important fair trade actors, well, these are, um, so beyond the, the schemes, there are also platforms like Commerce Equitable France. For the French amongst you, it is kind of a national platform in France. There are campaigning organizations like Fair World Project in the US. There is Fairness, which is a research network of academics on fair trade. For those amongst you, there is the Forum Fair Handel, which is kind of the, the in Germany, the, the, the German fair trade platform. There are also there is also a symposium, so an event gathering academics and researchers and practitioners to go deeper into certain research on fair trade issues. There is fair trade towns, which is this movement that I mentioned before. And there is a Fair Trade Advocacy Office, which is our office based in Brussels, which is a joint initiative of these two other global networks, the Fair Trade International and the World Fair Trade Organization. And as I explained last time, the Fair Trade Advocacy Office is a joint initiative of Fair Trade International and the World Fair Trade Organization set up in 2004. And in additional, of course, we've got national and continental platforms. So as you can see, there's all sorts of fair trade actors. Some are platforms, some are certification schemes, some are volunteers, some are shops. It's a big movement. Um, in terms of sales, for example, if we look at the fair trade international fair trade system, we've got more than 1,822 fair trade certified producer organizations in 1.7 million farmers in 73 countries. Uh, and, and then if you look at the World Fair Trade Organization, which is 
a guarantee system for social enterprises that fully practice fair trade. Uh, this is a very interesting community of 400 um, uh, committed fair trade social enterprises that are working to support also 1,000, 1 million livelihoods. In total, if we look at the market, um, because there are different schemes and unfortunately there is no true accurate um, market data on all certification schemes, but we're talking about 8 billion in 2016, which probably now is 10 to 12, uh, with a value of merchandise of trade in US dollars of 19 trillion. So it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a growing number of sales. And I think that something to say is that in the sales are increasing every year, in particular of fair trade certified products. <laughs>